No, they had fell in love in six days. They fell in love in six days. Bitch, if a nigga ain't ready to be with you in six months, cut his ass the fuck off. What's good, y'all? It's your girl, Let's Too Real, and we are back up in this thing, finally, with another video. I know it's been like, like eight years since I've been on YouTube, but you know, things happen in your life. <laughs> And you know, you you get a little distracted. But I'm back and I'm better than ever. Shout out to the 90s though. You see this shirt, A, made in the 90s. 80s babies, boo. Thousands babies, boo. It's 90s babies up in here, okay? Let me just tell y'all what this video is about. I know you clicked on it, you probably already know what's about Queen and Slim, the movie that just came out on Thanksgiving. You know, your girl had to go see that movie. And it was not a disappointment at all. I'm just going to tell you this right now. It was not a disappointment. You know, they'd be like, oh, it's the black Bonnie and Clyde. No, it's more than that. Bonnie and Clyde wasn't thug like that. Well, no, nah, they, they was pretty thug. They was pretty thug, but this is totally different. Like, we don't know nothing that happened with Bonnie and Clyde for real, for real, okay? We don't, know, we don't know shit but what they tell us, okay? Even though this movie might be fictional, a fictional movie, in today's time, Shit like this could happen, bitch, okay? It could happen with you and your nigga driving down the street. It could happen with you and your baby daddy just doing whatever the fuck y'all doing and end up getting pulled over and shit like this could happen. It could happen to anybody, okay? You know how some movies, they like to play the best parts of the movies for the previews and you be like, okay, this is going to be good. And you spent your hard-earned money on that damn ticket and you go in there and the best parts of the movie was literally what they show in the trailer. This is not it. The whole movie was good as hell from the beginning, the beginning to the end, okay? And trust me, the end had me in there crying. <laughs> I'm already like hormonal, okay? So I was in there like crying, bitch, like crying, like trying not to ball, but it was so good. I mean, like, bitch, just get to the fucking point, okay? Uh, I'm getting there. Calm down, Jesus. Um, there are some spoilers, so if you haven't seen it or if you don't really give a fuck about spoilers, then you'll be alright, okay? But if you don't like spoilers, sorry to tell you, a bitch gonna spoil the shit, okay? It's gonna be spoiled like milk. Let's start with the main characters, okay? I don't know their names. I, I really don't know their names in real life. I just know they're Queen and Slim. But the dude that plays Slim, y'all know him from Get Out with his big ass eyes. Y'all know him from that stirring the cup shit, okay? He playing Get Out. As for Queen, I don't think I've ever seen her in like any any movies or anything like that. I don't think I've seen her. I think she's like a fresh face. But trust me, it was a face that I didn't get tired of, bitch. Her long ass neck. Hey, she was working it, bitch. With braids, without braids, she was working it, okay? These two were complete strangers. I think they met on Tinder. They met on Tinder. They was on a first date. She didn't really even want to go on a date, okay? First of all, she didn't even want to go on a date, but she had just lost a case because she was a lawyer. A, shout out to my black queens out here trying to do something with their life other than just fucking the system up, okay? Shout out to my queens that's actually out here thriving to better their lives. She was a lawyer. I say was because after they did what they did, she wasn't a lawyer no more, okay? But she was a lawyer, and I really didn't get to what he was doing in life. I, I, didn't, I don't know what he was doing, really. I didn't really catch that, but... He did live with his parents, and like I said, she was a lawyer. She was living by herself, and she decided to go on a date with this young man who was slim. It's kind of crazy how it was their first date, and they had to encounter something so crazy, something just so out of this world. Like, it's really not out of this world, because like I said, it could happen to anybody. But it's so crazy that they had to encounter something on their first date. And he even asked her, like, like, what's about to happen? You know, is, is we going to go on a second date or whatever? And she was just like, she wasn't really feeling this nigga. Like, this nigga wasn't even on her radar or, like, close to being on her radar. She wasn't even feeling this nigga. He was feeling her. He bought her dinner and everything. And homegirl didn't even eat. <laughs> a bitch like me, you taking me out? Oh, we eating. And I might eat some of your food. Play with me if you want to. <laughs> Your plate is my plate. My plate is my plate. And that's how it goes. <laughs> but anyways, she wasn't really feeling him, okay? And like I said, she was a lawyer. So when they got pulled over, 
it was because he was trying to get his phone back from her. So he ended up swerving a little bit and he wasn't drunk. He does not drink. But when he pulled him over, he said that, you know, you didn't signal where you was going. You know what I'm saying? So he pulled him over and he went back to his car. You know what cops do? They take your shit, go back to the car, whoop de whoop, blah, 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 on that little speaker shit. This cop, this asshole, I feel like he was just wanting to catch a body that day. He just wanted to throw a nigga in jail. That's just how he came off. Like, he just woke up and was like, today's the day I throw a nigga in jail. That's just how he came off to me. And he was like, I'm going to need for you to get out the car. For what? I don't know. Like I said, I think he woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Somebody pissed in his cereal. Made him get out the car. He was like, open your trunk. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I'm in school for criminal justice. I'm like, what the? what is you doing? Talking about opening the trunk. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Boy. Where your warrant at? I'm not opening my trunk. You better call your boss, big dog. But... He had already agreed to the search, so um, the officer ended up going through his shit, and it was a bunch of shoe boxes in the back, and he was like, I'm about to go through your shoe boxes, and the nigga's like, okay, whatever. Like, hurry the fuck up. Nigga, it's cold. And he asked the officer, like, could you hurry up, which you could already tell the officer was just on edge, just ready for something to pop off. And when he said, you know, could you hurry up because it's cold out here, it like pissed the officer off that the nigga was cold. Like niggas don't get cold out here. Like what the fuck? And so he told him to get on his knees and he pulled the strap on the man. Like pulled the strap on the man for no reason at all. Just pulled the strap. Like I said, he woke up ready to catch a body. So when homegirl, when Queen was in the car, she realized that that shit was going down. So she got out of the car and she was like, hold up. Why is you doing this? Why he under arrest? What's your badge number? And it was making the officer antsy like he was already on, on edge but when she got the car and started hollering that real shit like what's your badge number why you got here on this ground like that what's your probable cause he started acting like a fucking fool and started waving that motherfucker shit around right and so he ended up shooting queen I'm like bitch what you done shot a woman I said oh my god he done, he done shot my bitch oh my god no he done shot queen and that's whenever they get into a kerfluffle. That's when they get into a kerfluffle. <laughs> if that's even a word. They get into an altercation. And they start, you know, scruffling on the ground. And that's when Slim pick up the officer's strap. And as the officer is coming towards Slim to fight him some more, he end up pulling the trigger. And that's what happened. And it's like, ooh. In that situation, honestly, it was kill to be killed. If you ask me, it was kill to be killed. And the officer got his ass bop, slopped, and flopped on the ground. And Slim, he he wasn't really, you know, comprehending what was going on because he had just caught his first body. And she was, she's a lawyer. Like I said, she's a lawyer. And she was like, number one, we black. Number two, you're black. Number three, you just shot a cop and we black. Okay. So he was like, nah, I need to go to my family house. Whoop de whoop. And she like, nigga, no, we can't do that. We just bopped a cop. Like, we have to go on the run. And that's what starts the movie, like Queen and Slim getting their names. Matter of fact, we don't even know their real names because the niggas' names is Queen and Slim. So they start on a journey to run away and, and hide from the popos. And that leads them to Louisiana. Okay. And, you know, her uncle stay in Louisiana or whatever. He got a house full of hoes. He he a pimp. He the pimp dog down there. Got a house full of hoes. And that's where you see Angel from Pose. If y'all ever seen Pose, Angel is in that movie. And she is slaying, bitch, okay? She goes to her uncle. She's asking her uncle for help. And at first, her uncle was very um, hesitant to help her. But Queen ended up helping him a long time ago. The reason why she went to her uncle is because, number one, that's family. And number two, he owed her big time because her uncle killed her mother and they were siblings brothers and sisters okay and her being a lawyer her first case that she ever had to do or the first case that she ever tried was setting her uncle free for killing her mother and queen has some mother issues she has some mother issues um slim even asked her like how do you deal with 
setting your uncle free for killing your mama. Like, your mama, he took your mama away from, like, being drunk. And they had an altercation. And he ended up killing her by accident. And, you know, she was just very torn up about that. But, long story short, her, uncle's end, her uncle ended up helping her. Ended up giving her the name of a white man that was going to help her get a plane and fly across the ocean. Because Slim thought it was a good idea to take their asses to Cuba. So... In order to get to Cuba, they either needed a boat or a plane. And her uncle was like, this dude I used to serve with in the army, he might have a plane. So, you know, he gave him the address or whatever and gave him a car, gave him some cash. And they was on their way. Now, on the way, the car breaks down. Okay. It's a nice-ass car. It's a Cadillac. It's like turquoise. It's nice, bitch. Okay. They got to get the car fixed. And, you know, in order to get the car fixed, they got to spend all that money that her uncle gave her to a mechanic. And, you know, he was like, okay, you can come back the next day and get your car. They was like, no, nigga, we need the car tonight. So they gave all the cash, all the bread to the men, and it was getting on his nerves. So he was like, you're getting on my nerves. Can y'all please leave me alone? And they was like, no, I'm not leaving you alone with, in, with this car. Like, what the fuck? We, we on the run, nigga. We need this car. So he was like, all right. You know what? Just to show you, I ain't going to take your car. Take my son. You know, that's that's the insurance. You take my son. You know, he'll show you around, whatever. I'm not going to take your car. They get to talk to his son. And they're walking. And he's like saying how much he admires them. He going after the wrong things. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about the wrong things. After they leave with the car. Because the daddy ends up fixing the car after they leave. The son... Is going on a protest. He goes to a protest, okay? And it's so crazy that he goes to that protest. He's already, like, angry. You can tell he's angry or whatever. And he goes to the protest, and he's like, he's like, shoot me. Lock me up. Like, he's just so angry. And so, this black cop comes up to the little boy, and it's like, you know, go home. Go home. We don't want to have to arrest you or anything like that. The little boy pulls out a motherfucking gun. I said, where he get that gun from? Ends up shooting the black cop that's telling him he need to go home, be careful. That's really, that's really low-key looking out for the little boy. He shoot the nigga in the face. He end up getting killed. Straight like that. Boom. Click, clap. As soon as he get in the movie, he's, he gone already. Because he, he done pulled the trigger. And he thought that what Queenie and Slim did was something that he should have did. Which was completely wrong because he ended his life. He lost his life. And that's really not what Queen and Slim stood for. They had to do what they had to do in order to survive. This little boy did that because he thought that all cops was bad. And he ended up shooting one. Ended up losing his own life. Ended up shooting a black man that was really looking out for him. Even if he was the police. He was in the wrong. That little boy was in the wrong. And I was literally shaking my head in that movie theater. Like I was so done i was like why and it's crazy because a lot of things like this happen in this world like people young kids are so misled to the point where they might actually lose their lives or they do lose their lives rather they're getting killed or they're getting locked up for life they go to the house that her uncle gave her the address for and it's a white man and a white woman and his wife Lord, I thought we were going to have problems with that hoe. I swear, she was just not feeling it. She was not having it. She didn't want to have to say them. She didn't want to be around them. She didn't want them in her house. Like, she she was a bitch, okay? And he was like, uh-uh, uh, uh, uh calm down, Margaret, okay? We're going to help these people. The, whenever they pull up to the house, it's a white bitch already outside just, like, watching the whole fucking thing. You know, nosy neighbor shit. As soon as I seen this hoe outside, I was like... It's going to be an issue with Police Betty, the one, you know, they call because niggas having a barbecue outside. It's going to be a problem with this hoe. I felt that already. Not even an hour into them about to eat dinner or whatever, the SWAT team at the motherfucking door. Little do the SWAT team know, these white folks got basically a hiding place under their bed, under the floorboard, like up under the floor. Like, this is it. So the police come upstairs trying to look for Queen and Slim, flipping the mattress, looking for them everywhere. They can't find them. So they just set up outside just in case, you know, they're still in the neighborhood or running around or whatever. Queen and Slim, 
been under there all night. The man and the woman don't come back because the police take them into custody because the police feel like they know where they are, which they do, but they're not snitching, which I commend because even the wife ain't snitch. I was like, okay, bitch. Okay, bitch. Y'all want to just lie because at first I wasn't too sure about your ass, but okay. And, you know, Queen and Slim, they end up jumping out of the damn house, like two, three stories, bitch. Queen them damn knocked her shoulder out of place. Slim, he stopped dropping roll whenever that nigga fall. Just bloop, bloop. He ended up making it. I showed her all out of place and shit. And they ended up going into the garage. He hot wiring the car. Well, he not really hot wiring it. He stuck a damn up in there. And, you know, a black cop is hearing like that. He heard her scream whenever Slim popped her shoulder back into place. And the black cop comes and he's hearing it. He pulls up the garage and see these two niggas in the car. It's that moment where you like, <gasps> like, is he going to take them in? Is this the end of the movie? That nigga took his hand off his gun and was like, go. Go ahead. I was like, oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, period, poo. I was like, everybody in the movie theater was like, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. We was just so happy that that officer let them slide. You know what I'm saying? So they on their way or whatever. And the white man gives them an address to a dude that he knows that has a plan. See, this is just all just too much for me. I'm already like skeptical. I'm, I'm a skeptical I'm a skeptical person, okay? Me having to go through all these motherfuckers to try to just get to a plane. I got a friend here. My friend got a friend here. This friend got a friend here. I, I'm not with that, okay? Either you know somebody or you don't, bitch. I will swim across the ocean. <laughs> I will find a boat, bitch, okay? I will uh, 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 all the way to the damn Cuba if I have to. But you know, they ain't never done nothing like this in their life. They nervous already. They ain't never done nothing like this in their life. So, they take the address that the white man gives them and is looking for this person that has a so-called plane. So, they end up falling asleep or whatever. And this black nigga come to the window with a whole lot of pump, double barrel. He comes to the window with a big ass shotgun. Like, click, clack, pat, pat, pow, okay? And... Queen and Slim is very hesitant to, like, believe this man. Which they should have been, damn it. But he was making a good point talking about what other choice do you have. You can either wait for the police or you can come with me and, you know, my homeboy got a plane or whatever. I ain't trust this nigga from the jump, okay? When I was asking questions, he was getting, you know, a little hostile. He was getting a little mad. Like, why, why y'all asking me all these questions? I'm here to help you. Like, uh-uh, uh-uh, Okay. He was just coming off real, real sleazy, real slimy, okay? And so, they go back to his house. He acting like he on the phone, but I swear, it's one of them phone calls where, ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Whenever you act like you're on the phone because a dude about to try to come talk to you, act like you're on the phone, you just, uh, yeah, you're so funny. It was like one of them phone calls, it felt like. Like, it felt like he wasn't even on the phone with nobody. It felt like bullshit. So, when he got off the phone, he was like, okay. He said that uh, he'll... I'll be ready in a day. And Slim was like, nah, big fella. Uh, <laughs> call him back and tell him that we ready right now. So he fake calls him back and says that they, they tripping and, you know, they, they, they need to go now. So he was like, all right. He got off the phone. He's like, all right, it's, a, it's an hour away. So we got to go. Like, what you doing? We got to go. So he get them in the car. The, the nigga smoking with them. Ask them do they want to smoke the blunt. They end up smoking their first blunts. And he passing the blunt, talking about something. Y'all gave the people something to believe in. Just spitting all this hot bullshit fire, right? Just hot fire. Just bullshit, okay? And just gassing them up. You know what I'm saying? Acting like he's a fan. Just real slimy. Like, ugh. Ugh. Stinking ass nigga. And try to act like, you know, he was with them and he support them. Ended up dropping them off at the airstrip for the airplane. The airplane is there. But like a bitch said, I'm skeptical as fuck. It's just too easy. The plane right there. This nigga just gonna drop us off and share his blunt. No. I'm skeptical. This nigga pulls off fast as hell. I'm a, I, that's the third skepticism. Okay. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's the third skepticism for me. Because it's just too easy. And where did he even come from? First of all, where he come from? Like, this dude just came out of nowhere. 
And so they're like, okay, it's a plane. They hold hands. They walk up towards the plane. I already knew the boys was going to pull up. Like my, my spidey sister was tingling. And guess what? The boys pulled up, bitch. Hey, that nigga set them the fuck up. He set their asses up. Talking about, you give the people something to believe in. But I'm going to set y'all asses up. Oh ass head. So he ended up setting them up. He got 500 racks. Because it was 250 racks on each of their heads. Queen... And Slim is sitting there talking to each other. They're like, get down on the ground. Whatever the police be saying and shit. Get down on the ground. Queen and Slim sitting there talking. Which is making me nervous. Because the police be antsy anyway. And you know, they was talking. And, you know, they had fell in love in six days. They fell in love in six days. Bitch, if a nigga ain't ready to be with you in six months, cut his ass the fuck off. Okay? If these niggas can fall in love in six days, just riding in the car stinking with no shower. Bitch, okay? Let that nigga go. Sitting there talking. And, you know, he was saying how he how he wished he could kiss all her scars. And, you know, she wanted to be his legacy. And just all this mushy, mushy, gushy, gushy love stuff, right? And this white bitch, this white police officer, just shoot Queen in the fucking chest. Like, I'm just sitting here like, why do you always got to shoot her? Why she always got to be the one to get shot first? Her, I said, oh, it's just showing us that America is scared of a strong huh, black woman. But we're not going to get into that. Okay, we're not going to get into that. But she gets shot. She gone. Dead. Okay. And he's sitting there. He's tripping because that's his boo-boo. Six days or not, he was riding. Okay. She was riding. They both was riding for each other. Okay. And he was tripping because that was his baby. And he picks her body up. And this, this man dies with dignity, okay? This man... You thought Cleo went out with a bang? Him and Cleo was up there for me, okay? Him and Cleo is up there for me the way they go out. Hey, you pick up Queen Biden and start walking. Like, look what y'all did to my bitch. Like, we, we ain't even really do nothing wrong. Start walking with her body. They shoot this man the fuck up, okay? They shot him clean the fuck up, okay? So... Just like Bonnie and Clyde got bops, Queen and Slim got bops. They it was done, and that's what really like took me. Like I was bawling, like I was so sad. Like what the? I really wanted them them niggas to get on a plane and just go because it's like they didn't even do nothing really. They protected themselves. It was either kill or be killed in that situation with that type of police officer because he was already ready for altercation. But they ended up getting killed or whatever. And the pit, and whenever they had went to that mechanic shop with the little boy and his daddy, the little boy had took a picture of them. This picture right here. He had took a picture of them, and it became like their legacy. You know, they people put that on their shirt. People made a mural of Queen and Slim with that picture. It was just so beautiful. And they ended up having a funeral. Her uncle was tore the fuck up because he didn't want nothing to happen to his niece. I was tore the fuck up, bitch. Okay, I was torn up. Like, I didn't expect that. I really wanted them to be free, but they ended up getting killed. And this movie was just really, really good. And it's just something that you just got to keep in the back of your mind. Like, things like this do happen. They still happen. And they might happen. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I'm a, on a scale of 1 to 10, because y'all know my ratings be off the fucking charts. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to rate this bitch motherfucking 11. That's just for me, period. I'm going to rate it at 11. Because not only was it a story that, like I said, could happen, it's also a love story too. And it's, it's a love story that ends in tragedy. Like... You know, they didn't even, she didn't even want to have nothing to do with Slim. And ended up falling for this man. Like, they was in love. And it was, like I said, it was a love story that ended tragic. And it shouldn't have, but that's just the way the movie, okay? And I really like this movie. I really enjoyed this movie. And it's definitely a movie that I'm going to watch again, okay? If anybody that's watching this video went and seen Queen and Slim, let me know y'all thoughts in the comments on what y'all thought about this movie. Like, did y'all think it was good? Did y'all think it was missing something? Or did you think it sucked? Because if you thought it sucked, I can't fuck with you. But I really like this movie. Like, I like this movie. And the fact that they got told on by a black man 
should let you know that you can't trust everybody. Like, you can't trust the niggas that you smoke with. You can't trust the niggas that they that call themselves your homies because they could be doing you the same way. And it's so crazy because in the movie, she was like, we need to flat this car down because their car had broke down. Their car always breaking down. But the car had broke down. And she was like, we need to flat this down. And he was like, hopefully they black. And she has said that's not always a good thing. It's not. Because the black nigga in the end told on their ass for 500 motherfucking racks, bitch. Okay? But tell me what y'all think about the movie Queen and Slim. Let me know y'all thoughts or whatever in the comments. Your girl Let's Too Real is up out this thing.